hello friends i welcome you all to my youtube channel in today's class uh, we'll be studying sexual reproduction in last class we have finished with a sexual reproduction in case of sexual reproduction which involves the formation of male and female gametes either by the same individual or by the different individuals okay that is only one organism can give rise to both male as well as female gametes male and female gametes here what happens two different organisms of different sexes are going to give rise to male gamete and female gamete the best examples are given here for this earthworm or same individual for same individual earthworm is our best example in case of earthworm what happens both testes and ovary are produced within an a same individual okay in case of cockroach what happens male is going to be a testis and female is going to be a ovary so in case of uh, same individual earthworm is an a best example we call such animal as an a bisexual animal and here in different different um, different individuals are formed going to give rise to the different gametes we are going to call such individual as an a unisexual animal okay in case of why we are see you you can just uh, observe carefully that we are calling them as a bisexual because two sexes are present by two by means two sexual so two sexes are present in same individual you can understand it very clearly and unisexual we are going to call one organism is having only one sex one organism is having only one sex okay next thing we are studying in case of plant called chera chera it is going to bear both male as well as female within one individual such um, plants we are going to call them as monoecious okay in case of the different individuals what happens here it is a bryophyte called marchensia here it is going to bear anthidiopore anthidiopore bears male gamete archegoniopore bears female gamete so such individuals we are going to call them as dioecious when we are coming for the higher plants the unique organ of the plant called flower is going to bear both the uh, gametes stamen is going to bear the male gamete and carpel is going to going to bear the female gamete we are going to call such uh, flower as in a bisexual flower so as we have read earlier that these gametes uh, now gametes are formed these gametes are going to fuse this is a male gamete and this is a female gamete okay this is a male gamete and this is a female gamete okay these are going to fuse after fusion what happens they are going to form zygote after fusion they are going to form zygote so gametes are always denoted in the haploid condition so after fusion what happens n and n going to fuse and it is going to form 2n okay so these gametes fuse to form zygote with which develops to form new organism it is an elaborate complex and so slow process so whenever we are comparing sexual reproduction with a respect to asexual reproduction it is a firstly it is a complex secondly it is a slow and the individuals which are formed we are going to call them as an offsprings they are not similar to their parents not identical to their parents or themselves but in case of asexual reproduction what was happening they were similar to themselves as well as parents but here it is different okay next a study of diverse organisms see whenever we are studying plants animals fungi though they are differing morphologically genetically and all but the process of sexual mode of reproduction that is formation of gametes fusion of gametes and formation of zygote is similar in all the organi organisms all organisms have to reach a certain stage of growth and maturity in their life before they can reproduce sexually 
see what happens the organism when it is going to take birth it is not involving directly in production of gametes first it is going to grow vegetatively you can see in case of plants or even in case of animals firstly they are maturing they are growing okay that phase we are going to call that phase as an a germline phase it is also known as vegetative phase in case of plants this phase is of variable duration in different organism for example you can see some organisms are going to live for more than 100 years or some organisms are going to live for about within a month so this phase of maturity is going to vary from one organism to other organism at the end of the juvenile or vegetative phase which marks the beginning of the reproductive phase that is uh, it is going to show some physical changes okay later we are we are going to study it in a plant as well as animals okay in case of plants the animal and biennial types of plants are uh, what we mean by annual plants in case of annual plants um annual plants are those plants which are going to complete their life cycle within a year in an a year they are going to sow the seeds okay they are going to flower and they are going to reproduce and they are going to produce the seeds or offspring in an a year biennials means within a year they are going to cover the cycle two times that is grow mature reproduce and die so this one cycle is been cycled two times in case of biennials so how you can uh, study the cycles see the annual and biennial types show a clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase see i told you just now what is vegetative phase vegetative phase en andre ant helade aita reproductive phase it is going to produce flower set seed senescent phase means it is going it is going to age and die okay but in the perennial perennial for example i can tell you mango okay mango plant banyan all such things are coming under perennials annuals and biennials i can tell you example groundnut jowar maize all these things are coming in annuals and biennials okay but in perennial species it is very difficult to clearly define this phases yes because they are going to live for large amount of years so we can't tell that when the uh, accurately we can't tell that how many years it takes to complete its uh, vegetative phase and reproductive phase and when it is going to attain the senescent phase accurately we can't uh, see uh, in very little amount of time uh, we can see annuals as well as biennials okay a few plants exhibit a usual unusual flowering phenomena means some of the plants are unusual not of the normal type they are telling some of uh, them such as bamboo species flower only once in their lifetime generally after 50 years or 100 years from 50 years to 100 years uh, bamboo plants they can flower okay only once they are flowering and soon after flowering they are going to produce large number of flowers and their fruits and then they are going to die uh there is an another plant called strobilanthus kunthiana uh, commonly called as neela kurenji it is going to flower once in 12 years for every 12 years that is going to flower so you can see in hilly regions of kerala karnataka and tamil nadu which where the whole hill is going to turn into a blue at that flowering season in that flowering season only they are going to reproduce produce seeds and they are going to multiply okay next when we are coming for animals in case of animals in a for example birds living in nature lay eggs only seasonally okay 
ಸೀಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೂನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮಂತ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲೇ ಎಗ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಎಗ್ ಬ್ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ಓಕೆ ಹೌ ಎವರ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಿವಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದಿ ಪೌಲ್ಟ್ರಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಬೀನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದಿ ಇಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿಕ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಪಸ್ಲಿ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಎಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲಾಸೆಂಟಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಎಕ್ಸಿಬಿಟ್ ಸೈಕ್ಲಿಕಲ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಓವರೀಸ್ ಎಸೆಸರಿ ಡೆಕ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಮೋನ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಈಚ್ ಡೇ an organism is not having the same amount of hormone okay each day the level of hormone is been regulated okay in this fashion the reproductive phase of a female is carried out uh, in case of a non primate mammals like cows sheep rat deer goats dog tiger etc such cycle changes during reproduction are called oestrocycle whereas primates such as monkeys apes and human it is called menstrual cycle many mammals especially those living in natural wild condition exhibit such no cycles only during favorable season in their reproductive phase and therefore called as seasonal predators see we are, uh, animals are going to have different different cycle of reproduction okay how the oval is produced whenever the oval is uh, reproduced in an a female that oval should not be wasted okay it should be fertilized so that after fertilization it gives rise to the uh, egg one so in such cases what happens in case of wild condition what happens they uh, they are going to breed seasonally it's not that they are not continuous breeder only seasonally they are going to produ- uh, they are reproductively active but in case of a uh, human beings or uh, some uh, many kind of mammals what is happening here is they are continue they are re- uh, reproductively active throughout the year we are going to call such condition as continuous breeder okay hmm. next after reproductive phase an organism is going to reproduce offspring it is going to attain the uh, after few years it is going to attain the phase of a senescence or old age okay lastly ultimately leads to the death okay uh, it uh, it is common to all organisms it's not that only for plants or only for animals okay such kind of transition from one growth phase to the reproductive phase and from reproductive phase to the senescence phase these all things is going to depend on hormones hormonal balance that is going to balance the whole body of an organism now we are only concerned with events in sexual reproduction as we are studying reproduction what all events are taking place in sexual reproduction we are going to study one by one briefly so here sexual reproduction is characterized by the fusion or fertilization of the male and female gametes male and female gametes must and should come in contact to each other only then fertilization can be enhanced the formation of zygote after fertilization or fusion what happens next it is formed called as zygote and when zygote is formed in later stages embryo is being developed the uh, the process of development of embryo we are going to call it as an embryogenesis for our convince they have divided this whole phase of sexual uh, event in sexual reproduction as pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization okay i'll tell you very shortly what is pre fertilization uh, fertilization and post fertilization listen carefully fertilization means what there will be an uh, egg and and there will be an sperm 
okay it is going to come and fertilize the egg and this egg is going to develop into a zygote now we won't call it as an egg after fertilization we call it as an zygote and the nuclear content is also doubled after fertilization before it was haploid after fusion of male and female nuclei it becomes diploid okay so we are going to study the event of sexual reproduction under three sub concept first concept is pre fertilization that is before fertilization see now fertilization has occurred here okay before to this fertilization means we are going to study how this egg is formed how this sperm cell is formed okay and fertilization the first one was pre fertilization second one what we are studying is fertilization how fertilization is occurring thirdly we are studying is post fertilization after fertilization what happens okay in three different concepts one by one we'll be starting with pre fertilization now so in case of pre fertilization as i told you earlier it in this includes all the events of sexual reproduction prior to the for uh, fusion of gametes the two main pre fertilization events are one is gametogenesis under this pre fertilization we are going to study gametogenesis and nextly we'll be studying how this formed gametes are going to transfer under topic called gametes transfer okay coming firstly to the gametogenesis gametogenesis refers to the process of formation of two types of gametes male and female gametes are haploid cells see friends if you want me to explain how gametes are haploid please comment below so that i'll be explaining it under the separate video okay the gametes are haploid cells in some algae the two gametes are also similar in appearance that is not possible to categorize them into male and female gametes so such kind of gametes we are going to call them as homogametes or isogametes you people are understanding see what happens here here it is the best example here we are having male as well as female we can't identify which is male and which is female genetically or morphologically such kind of gametes we are going to call them as homogametes or isogametes okay now you people understood homogametes isogametes okay and uh, now you people can also understand uh, what are heterogametes homogametes means what here both gametes male as well as female are similar such gametes we are going to call them as homogametes yes or no where a female gamete or male gamete we can distinguish them properly we are going to call them as heterogametes so when we can distinguish them properly we uh, there is a separate term for male as well as female for male we are going to call anthrozoid or sperm for female we are going to call egg or ovum now you people understood what are heterogametes and homogametes next will be going for sexuality in organisms 
sexuality in organisms so here what happens it's not that generally sexual reproduction in organism generally involves fusion of gametes from two different individuals but this is not always true uh, it may differ also okay uh, in future we'll be understanding why it can differ and all okay firstly we'll be coming for plants now here what happens plants may have both male and female reproductive structures in the same plant see uh, for your understanding i'll be drawing two plants and a clear cut flower which is drooping for your understanding i am drawing it separately nicely here of it is a flower it's actually here i have zoomed it out when i have zoomed it it is going to appear in this fashion so next another plant i am going to draw and even it is also going to bear a flower when i am going to zoom it out it is going to appear in this fashion okay here see plants may have both male and female reproductive structure in the same plant we are going to call them as bisexual or different plants we are going to call them as unisexual see if this plant is bearing male called anther these are male organs or stamens so we are going to uh, we are going to see male organ as well as female carpel if we are seeing both these things we are going to call them as bisexual plants in case of unisexual plants what we can see here only male organ is present so we are going to call such plants as unisexual plants okay in several fungi and plants the terms such as homothallic and monoecious are used to denote bisexual now i have drawn here what bisexual plants okay within one plant id vande plant aithilla within one plant only one plant is required for sake of reproduction okay no two individuals are uh, requiring because both uh, reproductive organs are present here on the same plant uh, in in such case where both male and female are present we are going to call them as bisexual in such condition we are going to call with the another term called homothallic thai or and monoecious this is also a uh, two different terms given for bisexual plants okay please don't get confused between the terms next things uh, next thing is heterothallic and dioecious are terms used to describe unisexual see as i have drawn unisexual plant only male is present here these are unisexual which is going to uh, be called by the another term called heterothallic and dioecious this is unisexual plants unisexual plant and bisexual plant okay in flowering plants the unisexual male flower is staminate see as this flower is containing the male organ or stamen stamen is a male organ right so for this flower we can call for this flower as staminate please don't get confusion between the terms for flower we are going to call them as staminate that is bearing stamens for them we are going to call as stamens 
as they are bearing stamen so we are going to call them as staminate flowers okay while the female i had i didn't draw female plant here now i am drawing female plant female plant is going to flower okay here this flower is going to contain a carpel when we are going to dissect of the flower we can find the carpel in this fashion okay so such flowers we are going to call them as pistillate we can call it as an for this we can there are different terms call carpel we can call it carpel or pistil so as pistil or carpel is present so we call it as pistillate now you people are understanding next uh, so as it is bearing pistil we call it as pistillate flower in some flowering plants both male and female flowers may be present on the same individual we call them as monoecious yes see in case of um, in monoecious plant i uh, showed you bisexuality but okay bisexual flower in monoecious plant see uh, please uh, friends don't get confused between monoecious and bisexuality see in case monoecious is depending that depending on bisexuality of the uh, plant we are going to call the monoecious term okay it means it has to bear both male and female both flowers should be bear now this both male and female are present on one flower only okay this is also one case in another case what happens these are bisexual flowers in another case what happens the flower which are bearing by the plant this is male flower which is and this is uh, this is male flower and this is female flower that uh, that means it is going to bear carpel these are going to be a stamens for ex best example to understand this is jawar or maize sorry maize plant is best example so you people can understand it very easily uh, why because uh, at the top will be having male flower male inflorescence and at the bottom will be having the female inflorescence okay though the flowers are unisexual but the plant is bisexual it is for that plant we are going to call it as monoecious okay you people are understanding the term next both male and female are present on the same individual we are going to call it as monoecious if male and female are on the separate individual we are going to call the term dioecious see male is on different and female is on different we are going to call the term dioecious okay some example of monoecious plants are cucurbits and coconuts and of dioecious are papaya and date palm okay here monoecious uh, you can see the uh, climber of cucurbit here it is going to bear female flowers separately there will be some leaves and all then after few few extend it is going to bear the male flowers in case of monoecious and in case of coconut what happen uh, we can see a obvious a small coconut like appearing appearance right at the base of this inflorescence only one it is a compound inflorescence only one i have to clear okay it is going to be here in this fashion this will be smaller at the end they will be larger these are the female flowers or pistillate flower now you people are getting and at the end you are having very tiny tiny male flowers when you are coming to the tip around 200 male flower you can see for about 2 to 3 female flower in one inflorescence so 
after fertilization all these male flowers are going to wither out only these are going to set fruit okay this is a, a example of coconut and cucurbit in monaceous and in case of dioecious plant yes it is the best example that papaya plant there is a male plant as well as female plant in case of papaya so if you bring male plant if you are planting only male plant it is going to bear only the male flower it is not going to fruit papaya plant you people are getting so whenever you are planting the uh, papaya you have to plant both male as well as female plant so that you will be getting fruits in future also so uh, 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 there is a uh, something uh, that if the pap male papaya plant uh, this is female and this is male um, male papaya plant uh, if it is afar or uh, as uh, for example about 1 km it can pollinate the female plant okay at least to that extent of area at least there should be a male plant okay next uh, date palm is also having the same thing uh, name name the types of the gametes that are formed in the staminate and pistillate flowers it is an assignment for you people you can go through it so next uh, we will be studying in case of animals okay animals also we are finding both unisexual as well as bisexual animals uh, bisexual animals as I, you, you have read that earthworm we are also calling such kind of animals as hermoprodites okay next coming to cell division during gamete formation gametes in all her heterogametic species are of two types namely male and female okay you people know there is male gamete male and female gamete gametes are haploid though the parent plant body from which they arise may be either haploid or diploid the haploid parent produces gametes by mitotic division does this mean that meiosis never occur in organisms that are haploid carefully examine the flow charts of life cycle of algae that you have studied in class chapter 3 the get into understand the answer okay see i'll explain you people see uh, uh, here uh, individuals um, what we are having for example haploid individuals we can take them such as algae okay uh, diploid individuals will be taking angiosperms so that you people can easily get it okay algae see this is a, a thallus structure of algae okay here is our story it is in this fashion in case of an angiosperm plants are in this fashion and roots are there okay this in case of angiosperm this is macroscopic without any microscope what all plants you can see uh, are macroscopic okay uh, these you people are familiar where you can see briefly each and every structure of the plant in case of algae these are minute you have you need microscope to study them here what happens these organisms each and every cell is haploid here okay so what happens this cell itself can develop into gametes by repeated mitotic division only mitotic division oh, mitotic division it will give rise to a large number of gametes of haploid gametes okay but here what happens these are diploid in nature these gametes so they are undergoing meiosis when they are undergoing meiosis what happens they are going to produce haploid gametes four haploid gametes okay when you clearly understand mitosis and meiosis you people can understand this concept okay 
okay these are going to produce gametes for example ovule or anther in case of higher plants okay here gametes are formed soon after the formation of gametes there is fusion and it is going to form diploid when this organism forms the diploid zygote this diploid zygote immediately undergoes meiosis and at this stage of a zygotic phase only it undergoes meiosis so we can't see meiosis here you people are understanding prior to the formation of gametes we won't see meiosis but in case of higher plants prior prior to the formation of gametes itself we are going to see the meiosis i think you people are, have got uh, the answer for this question several organisms belonging to monera fungi algae and bryophytes have haploid plant body uh, as i told you example here but in organism belonging to pteridophyte gymnosperm angiosperm and most of the animals including human being the parental body type is diploid this is an example for diploid and this is for haploid this is for haploid and this is for diploid okay it is obvious that meiosis the reduction division has to occur in diploid plant body as to produce haploid gametes i told you meiosis is going to occur before the production of the gametes okay people are getting in diploid organism specialized cells called meiocytes gamete mother cell undergo meiosis the cell which is undergoing meiosis we are going to call such cell as meiocytes at the end of meiosis only one set of chromosomes gets incorporated into each gamete see this means what here we are having two sets of chromosome uh, that is uh, for example you think that an organism is having four chromosome four four sorry four chromosome um, in its diploid state one Two, three, four. Okay, four chromosome is having in its diploid state. What happens here? Haploid in haploid condition. What happens? Two chromosome are going to one cell, and other two chromosomes are going to another cell. Okay, and now it is a replica of this. and this is a replica of this so in this fashion what we are getting is four gametes we are getting actually chromosome should be denoted in this fashion to make you understand i have drawn this x type okay uh gets incorporated into each gamete careful um, carefully study the table 1.1 and fill in the diploid and haploid chromosome numbers of an organism uh, is there any relationship in the number of chromosome of the meiocytes and gametes i am going to tell you one example and you people have to fill rest of the things okay human beings in diploid see you people can understand this diploid we are having 46 chromosomes okay in haploid condition do half of the diploid what you people will be getting that will be the haploid so if they have given haploid do the double of it you will be getting the diploid so you can fill each and every column of this okay it's assignment for you people so next um in this fashion the gametes are formed in next class we'll be studying the gamete transfer okay thank you friends